Okay, so this video, I'm just going to walk you through some website examples and help you pick out that bibliographic info. And so these are websites that could provide you reputable and credible information for academic research. These are things you can typically access through Google. And some of them would be what I consider journal articles, but because they're being published online and they don't have that bibliographic info of journal volume issue and page numbers, you're pretty much just citing them as a website. And so it's very similar to other things that are solely websites and don't have any print versions. And this one, this New York Times article is a good example of that. So you're seeing up here at the top that this is the New York Times, which hopefully y'all know is a very, very reputable national newspaper. Um, and so it is their website that they're having this article about families not being allowed in central care or critical care units during uh, COVID-19 due to contamination. And so if you're looking for the bibliographic info for this, this is pretty easy because it's being published and it's giving you all of that data. So you're seeing here, the author is this Daniela J. Lamas. Lamas, I'm not quite sure how to say it, but I know how to spell it. Make sure you are getting that middle initial in there because it's part of the publication name. You do want to include that. Your what? So your title is clearly going to be this families are central to critical care, but the waiting room is empty. And that is your complete title. This underneath it, you see this a lot with websites, um, with magazines and newspaper titles. This isn't really a subtitle as much as kind of like a summary tagline. Uh, it's giving you a little uh, teaser of what the article's about and why you're continuing reading it. This would not be part of that bibliographic info. That's not part of the title. That's really a description of what it is. And so students really get confused on that. Sometimes you just got to think of use that critical thinking skills. Is this the title or is it describing what the article is about? If it's describing what the article is about, that's not part of it. Another thing that's not part of it is this opinion section. Uh, so this little header above the web page title. This confuses students occasionally. This is the section of the newspaper itself. So if you're looking up here um, at the menu of the web page, you see you have for this type of publication, um, lots of times with other blogs and magazines, websites as well, you have different sections of a newspaper. Um, I hope most of you have looked at newspapers or looked at magazines enough that you typically, y'all might have looked at magazines. You have like your intro information. You typically have like editorials. You have standard columns and then you get your feature articles. And so sometimes you're getting these descriptions above the web page title or the article title of what section it's in, that's what that opinion is. And so you're seeing it's a hyperlink that when I mouse over it, you can click on it. You can click on it and it takes you to other similar articles or web pages. That's typically a section information. That's not part of bibliographic information. You don't need to include that. Your where is once again going to be that New York Times because that is the newspaper or website main title. So you're seeing it up here at the top. You're also seeing it in the URL that is that nytimes.com. So what you're getting for that .com is typically what you're going to look for for the web page title. Your date is also pretty easy to find on this one because it's right with all the other bibliographic info. It's right here up at the top, August 17th, 2020. And so that was the date this was published and put online. And so there's all your bibliographic data. You take this URL from the top bar and you can copy and paste that. And then that is your complete uh, bibliographic data for the website. So for things that there are website copies of publications, this bibliographic data is pretty easy to find. Another example of this, um, next one I have pulled up is Vanity Fair. Some of you may uh, be familiar with this title. Um, if you're not, that's okay. Um, it's a pretty long running fashion and culture magazine. And so this is their um, online version of it. And so once again, because this has been published, um, you have really easy bibliographic info. So Nick Belton down here, um, you're seeing underneath it is your author. Your date is this August 13th, 2020. So you're getting all of this right here at the top. Web page title slash article title. All rich people can't stop themselves. The Lux Quarantine Lives of Silicon Valley. And so you're seeing you do get a title and then the subtitle. And so you can tell the difference there because you're getting this semicolon. So if you're seeing something separated by a semicolon, that's a title and subtitle and you need to take both. Once again, what you don't need to take is this description of it. 
And so you got this little long sentence um, talking about rich people who can't stop themselves from throwing parties. Uh, that's the description of what the article is about. But that's not part of the title, not part of the bibliographic info. Once again, coronavirus is also not part of that title. That is a header for their section. And so you can see up here kind of deal of they have that as a section. Um, you have, if you click on that, there are different menu options. And so coronavirus is a section of their website and of their publication. It's not part of the title. Vanity Fair is the where. So that is your magazine slash website title. So it comes for that.com. And then so take that complete URL and then there's your how. So really easy for these things that have specific authors, specific publication dates that it comes from. All right, next one for all of my education. We got a lot of um, early childhood education majors in this class. Um, maybe some of y'all have seen this website before called Education World. And so this is a blog article coming off of their website um, about COVID-19 and how it's changing education. And so this is one, though, that you're getting a little bit more tricky that you're having to look around for the info. So if your information of who, what, when, where is not right up at the top, before you say that the information is not there, you really, really need to thoroughly check the entire page to make sure you don't have it. So for the who, this one's pretty simple. You got the Steve Haberlin is the blog author. So he is the one who wrote this blog post. Um, your what? So what is your web page title? Web page title is not this education world up here at the top. It is this COVID-19 pandemic is showing us what education needs to be. So it's the specific page you're on. Um, Remember how I said it's kind of like an article coming out of a journal. This is the page coming out of the website. Even if you look up here at the URL, you're getting the website with this educationworld.com. The web page is the information that follows it. So it's the smaller piece of the larger whole. So this is your web page, your what, your where is this education world. So this is your main website title. The tricky one for this page is it doesn't have a date up here at the top. And so if you're not seeing a date by the author and the web page title, by the article title, um, you got a few other places you need to look. Typically, I would scroll down to the bottom of the article itself. Sometimes you have dates and authors down here at the bottom. That's not actually unusual for some of this info um, for it to be what's called a signed um, entry. So think about how you write a letter to someone. I know that's not common practice for most uh, students your generation, but when you finish a letter, you sign your name at the bottom. You say, love, best regards, sincerely, Laura Hess, whatever your name is. Um, it's called a signed entry because sometimes you see your author and date down here at the very bottom of the info. That's a good place to look. So if you don't see it at the top, check the bottom of the web page information. So the information of where the content that you're reading ends. If it's not there, then you come down here to this footer info. The footer info is all of this sitemap stuff down here at the bottom. Most of the stuff you never look at, really you're looking for something that says copyright. And they do have it right down here, copyright 1996 to 2020 by Education World Inc., all rights reserved. So this is the company that owns it and they own it for those dates. Um, we talked last week that if you're ever seeing a date range, you typically uh, need to take the most recent date. Um, we didn't talk about date ranges. We talked about it with books if you have multiple dates. So take the most recent. You don't need that 1996, but you do need that 2020. So it has been updated. That would be the copyright date of ownership of this blog article because they're not telling you when it was actually published. So take that copyright date. And then your URL once again up at the top. Okay, coming back to other pages on this. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I had one pulled up or so I thought. Okay, so this is another one that uh, Education World also brings you lesson plans. And so if you're wanting to cite this and take information from this, you have, this is one you would have to look around the screen. So you're getting your what up here with lesson plan baseball. You're getting your where with Education World, but this is that example of a signed entry. So you're getting to the bottom of the content of the page you're reading. So not all of this ad, not all of these extra things over here on the side. What is the content in the center you're reading? Down here at the bottom, this one's written by 
Kimberly Greken, who is an Education World contributor. Um, this little title after her name kind of gives you credentials of who she is and why she's writing for this and why they're publishing her. That's not part of the bibliographic info. You just need her name for that. Um, and then you also get the copyright date there as well. And so that's an example of that signed entry. So you're getting that author name and date right underneath the info. All right, so <coughs> carrying on, I'm doing one big long video today. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Like I said before, um, government websites can be great sources of information, but, but the problem with government websites is they have lots of different departments. And so this is an example of, actually, I'm going to skip this one. We're going to go back to it. We're going to look at the CDC one first. Okay. So pretend that last 30 seconds didn't happen. Um, so you're looking at this page coming out of the CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, which is a department of the government, specifically of the Health and Human Services Agency that um, deals with communicable disease and controlling it. You should have been hearing the name CDC quite a bit since COVID-19 has occurred. This is a page on measles. And so it gives you information on what the measles is, um, questions about it, cases and outbreaks, signs and symptoms, et cetera. And so if you're running an article or a paper on measles, this could be a very good factual resource for you to give basic information about what measles are. Government websites very rarely have a person attached. And so scrolling around this page, you do not see a name anywhere. Um, what you're looking for then, if you don't have a name, if you don't have a person, that's when it becomes the corporate author. So who is the organization that created this website? And so then that is when your who and your where become one most of the time. So the Center for Disease Control is who is creating and owns this information. It's also where it's being published. So if you were giving, so CDC, uh, typically, you want to actually write it out. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is going to be your who. Your what is going to be measles, rubella. Your where is going to be cdc.gov. Uh, so the Center for Disease Control is the title again. You don't want to take the URL of .gov unless it's also up here in the title. And then your date, if you scroll down here to the bottom, you don't have a copyright date down here with all this other contact info, but you do have a page last reviewed, October 4th, 2019. And so this is where you're, that date you're wanting to take for it. So look around the bottom. Um, this is a good example of when you're taking a corporate or government agency as your author. Most of the time it doubles up as your website name, that it does double duty. So coming back to this one on USDA Department of Agriculture um, and pet travel. This is one where your who can get a little bit convoluted. Um, good metaphor would for this would be going back to UNCP versus the library. That um, you could say UNCP stated something, but you could, if you be more specific, you could then state the library said that. Um, so you have this information about bringing dogs into the United States. Uh, so here is your website title, web page title, sorry, web page, article title. You have this last modified date of June 2nd, 2020. Uh, so that would be your date. You don't have a name attached to this. You don't have a person name attached to it. And so this is where you're kind of looking for this organization. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing because you have the United States Department of Agriculture, but you have their subset, sub-agency, Animal and Pl Plant Health Inspection Service. And so this would be the more accurate description of it because yes, the APHIS, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, is part of the Department of Agriculture. But if you can be more specific, instead of saying this bigger department, you can say uh, this more, this smaller department is who is in charge of it. It's a much more accurate view of it. And so USDA wouldn't be wrong. It does own it, but it's more accurate to say APHIS. So if you're getting that subset, that is who I would take as the corporate author and as the where, because you're seeing up here that you're getting APHIS.USDA.gov. Um, it's getting that smaller department as the where. So APHIS, Animal Plant and Health Inspection Service, would be your who as well as your where. All right, look around is the biggest one. Okay, so this last one, um, coming up with the National Archives 
website about post office records of where do you find post office records historically. This is one to where you don't have a person. Um, again, so your National Archives is going to be both your author and your website name. Uh, so National Archives coming out of Washington, D.C. Post Office Records would be your web page title. And then scrolling down to the bottom, all the way down. Uh, you don't have a copyright date down here with the contact info, but you do get a page was last reviewed on July 27th, 2020. And so that's going to be your updated date. So if you're looking for dates, you look at the date up near the title. If you don't have it there, look at the bottom of the content. Typically, you're going to get a last review date there. If you don't have one there, that's when you come down here to this connect with us, contact us kind of info at the very bottom and look for that copyright date. Okay, hope this kind of clears up where you look for things. Um, do make sure you check everywhere. And sometimes you don't have dates. Uh, sometimes you don't just like where you don't have authors, if you don't have an author, you don't have a person as an author, that's when you look to the corporate agency. If you don't have a date anywhere on that page, you looked at the top, you've looked at the bottom of the content here to see if it's signed at the bottom, you've looked for that updated date, you don't have anything down there. Sometimes that happens. It is okay to say no date was provided if that's the case, but make sure you check everywhere before you say that.